Namaste to all of I am Kartika Praveen of Class 9A. Today is World First Aid Day. The International Federation of Red Cross and the Red Cross Societies introduced World First Aid Day in the year 2000. Subsequently, the second Saturday of the month, September, is celebrated worldwide as First Aid Day. Today, to tell us something about First Aid, we have Dr. Praveen Govinda, who is a consultant, ELD surgeon at Aston Mercedes Kitchen. Welcome, Doctor. Uh, so, please tell us about the importance of First Aid. Explain to you this way. Even in a small state like Kerala, we lost 4,400 people last year due to road traffic accidents. That is double number happening in UK. If you look at the natural scenario, the number goes to a staggering 1.5 lakhs every year. Most of them died due to bleeding or choking of the airways. Believe me, more than half of them could have been saved by timely intervention of non-medical people by giving first aid. Simple measures like clearing the airway, giving chest compressions and giving mouth to mouth breathing could have saved their lives. That is the importance of giving first aid. So in this coming in this presentation, let me explain to you the basic principles of first aid. There are certain general principles that you follow in an emergency situation. Call for help, don't panic and remain calm. Ensure your own safety before you start helping others. Use logic and common sense. For example, if you cannot swim, never try to save a drowning person yourself. Ask for help. Look for dangers to the injured person and arrange for the safe transport. Seek medical assistance at the earliest and no emergency numbers. For example, you can call Fire and Rescue at 101, Police Emergency Assistance at 112, Nearest Police Station at 100, and Ambulance Services at 108. When you learn any language, you always start with the alphabets. A, B, C and D are the first four alphabets in English language. But to know first aid, you just need to remember doctors A, B, C, D. Here, D stands for danger, R stands for checking for response of the person, S shouting for help, A, B, C and D stands for airway, breathing, circulation and prevention of disability. However, if you are a trained medical person, D could also stand for defibrillation, that is giving electrical shock to a heart that has stopped beating. Now let us examine certain situations in which your knowledge of first aid could be of use to somebody. For example, if somebody has fainted, it could be due to different reasons. For example, skipping of meals, inadequate sleep, dehydration or stress. Just remember doctors A, B, C, D. Shift him out of the dangerous situation, that is if he is near fire, sharp objects or live electric wire, shift him out of that situation. And check for his response by tapping his shoulder and asking him if he is okay or not and shout for help. Step is to check his airway. Place one of your hands under his neck and the other one over his forehead and gently move his chin upwards to examine the oval cavity to ensure that there is nothing obstructing his airway. It could be blood, vomitus or some dentures obstructing the airway. If you find any, remove them to ensure that the airway is open. After ensuring that the airway is open, examine the breathing. How do you do that? Watch for the movement of the chest up and down with breathing. Feel the expired air on your body and listen to his breath sounds. Next, check for circulation. How do you do that? You feel the pulse of the person. With three fingers, that is the ring finger, index finger and the middle finger, you place it over the inner aspect of the forearm, just above the level of the wrist, in line with the thumb. You will be able to feel the pulse. This pulse is called the radial pulse. If you are unable to feel the radial pulse, check for the pulse in the neck. Where do you do that? Place your three fingers below the lower jaw, just inside the prominent muscle of the neck. You will be able to feel the pulse. This pulse is called the carotid pulse. If the airway is clear, he is breathing normally and if his pulse is normal, all that you need to do is to just roll him over to the side with the upper knee bent and the underarm supporting his head. This is called the recovery position. On the other hand, his airway is clear but he is not breathing properly or his pulse is not felt, probably he could have had a heart attack or he could have had a bleeding inside the brain. Whatever be the reason, in this situation you are supposed to start what is called ACPR, that is a cardio pulmonary resuscitation. 
the CPR is a life saving procedure wherein you give mouth to mouth respiration and chest compression so as to help the heart to recover. With interlocked fingers, apply pressure with the heel of your palm over the central part of the chest without bending your elbows. You have to do it really fast and really hard so that the chest wall moves around 2 inches with every compression. And you have to give compressions at the rate of 2, sec two compressions per second. After completing 30 such chest compressions, give 2 mouth to mouth breathing. And after every cycle, reassess to see whether the pulse or the breathing has returned. If not, continue the cycle till response is achieved or a medical team arrives. In case of a child, the procedure of giving CPR is exactly the same. But the main difference is that you use only two fingers to give the chest compression. Now let us move on to the next situation, trauma. For example, if you are dealing with a person who has met with a road traffic accident, apart from assessing his airway, breathing and circulation, you are also supposed to assess the disability level of the person, meaning the extent of injury to important nerves and blood vessels. In such a situation, you are supposed to immobilize the person in exactly the same position as he was found using whatever material that is available as shown in this figure. It could be towels, newspapers, blankets, etc. While transporting an injured person, you have to ensure that the injured part is splinted properly by using various methods like folded newspapers, pillows or whatever materials that are available to you. Extreme care has to be taken to avoid twisting or bending of the head, neck or back of the person to avoid injury to the spinal cord which could result in paralysis. I hope this presentation was useful to you and I would request smart kids like you to share this information with your friends, family members and relatives so that we are able to save people from the verge of death back to life. And if anybody is interested, I would be happy to share the complete version of this presentation with any of you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, for the informative presentation.